Good afternoon. Yeah, okay, good afternoon. <laughs> happy Monday. Yes, it has to be a happy Monday. You know why? Because it's almost November and it's, we're kind of having that Indian summer and I'm loving that. Um, thank you all for uh, the reading, the the poetry that I've been putting out there. Um really loving that you all are, uh, are really just chiming in the way you are. Please continue to do so. Um, I want to make a comment about the, the video that I, the video, <laughs> the poem that I wrote called Fresh Eyes. I, I, pre, I really appreciated that one because living here in, um, in Hammond, Indiana, and actually we live in this little small subdivision called Hessville. And um, we have our own zip code, and you can put Hessville or Hammond on my on your envelope, and we'll still get it. But the fact is, it <clears throat> last week we were uh, bringing a, a, one of our dearly loved children to the house at La Portia Lee, and uh, she hadn't come to visit. I mean, we're always going to her, but this time we brought her here, and she's in the car, and we're you know I'm, I'm looking at. You know, in your own town, you always have a lot of complaints. And she looks around and she goes, oh, you all have such a nice little town. And I thought, hmm, do we really? And it kind of stayed in the back of my head. And uh, I was like, okay, maybe we do. You know, you don't, you don't appreciate what you have until somebody else looks at it and goes, that's really nice. And then you step back and you go... It really is. Now, for me as a writer, that meant I'm going to hold on to that. And that's what I do. When people say things, do things, what I see, I kind of hold on to it. Now, I don't always write the um, the very first thing that comes to my head because it's not always possible. And look at me. I, gotta, I have a phone, right, that has a stylus. It has S notes. I'm supposed to be able to just go here, pull this stylus out of my phone, right? Swipe down, pick a page, and start writing. It's just that simple, but I don't always do it. However, when I have an idea now, because even as, a, as someone who has been writing for as long as I have, I when I get an idea for a a poem, I write down the first few words and I think, okay, that's good, and I'll come back to it. And those can be a little hard to write if I don't write it all down right away. That inspiration is there, it's in me, and it'll come back to me. And I'm, I'm hoping that this will have all of you who are interested in writing to say, okay, I, I don't have it the whole idea right now but I can write it down and so do that write it down and when you get time go back and look at it and say hmm what was I thinking and in those first few words you will come up with what it was that you were thinking when you wrote down those words and where you were what was it that inspired those words I mean what was going on in your head and and it trust me it'll work out um, because I have the absolute worst memory these days. Um, if I don't write things down, I'm trying to tell you right now. And uh, and so <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, so that's how Fresh Eyes came. It's that one little thing that she said. And, uh, and I thought about it. I thought, hmm, she's right. We do have a nice little town. It's not perfect, no town is, but we have a nice little town. Secondly, um, the Indiegogo project that I put up, now, it's a funding project, but it's not a funding, well, I thought it would be a funding project to gather some money, uh, to put with what I have, uh, to, to print excerpts from my resume. And what I've learned is, uh, people really just don't uh, fund books the way they used to. Uh, we love books, but our attention span, and I'm putting me in there too, is very short. 
We don't have a whole lot of time to capture anyone's opinion. So everything, you got to have the bell, wheels, and the, the confetti, and the lights, and this is what I have, you know. <laughs> you get that attention, and then you have another eight seconds to get that point across. Um, so, uh, and books just, books are just like that. Um, it's got to be colorful or romantic or adventurous or exciting, a spy chiller and a thriller. And then it's constantly marketing and putting it out there and putting it out there. But unfortunately for books these days, I mean hardback, soft cover books that you hold in your hand and you're reading this paper and ink. People just are not buying them the way that they used to. That's why so many bookstores have closed in recent years. I'm a paper and pencil girl. Love my books. But... I said, okay, then, and, and I love my technology, don't get me wrong, I am thinking about what to do next after this project is over, regardless to the amount of money that is collected on the Indiegogo project. Now, also, I've also found out that Indiegogo, <clears throat> Kickstarter, GoFundMe, uh, Dream Fund, I think it is, um, they're, they're all basically the same. And that uh, they allow you to, to put things up for free and then they take a percentage of what you collect because, I mean, let's face it, they still do have to uh, run the site. I chose Indiegogo because the knowing that you can kit, you're literally keeping like 97% of what you collect. And that's a good thing. I don't think it's 97% or even 90% on Kickstarter. I'm not sure how GoFundMe goes or, or Dream Fund. But it's a work. It's once you put that project up, you got to work that thing. And not every day, but you have to work it. You have to put stuff on it. You have to um, get people interested in it. And and you just have to babysit it for the entire time. Um, Kickstarter will let you just go ahead and cancel it if you don't like the way things are going. Um, I decided to keep it up to see what would happen. It didn't allow me to see how many people were actually viewing it or how many people were actually sharing it. Indiegogo has allowed me to have that one thing. And I think that that's very interesting because there are people around the world looking at my project. And I think that in itself is a publicity. So even if uh, the money is not collected, the publicity is there. And, um, and I'll just move on from there. And you have Amazon that I'm going to go on Amazon, I'm pretty sure, because it's very popular. But here we got to go all the way back to the beginning and say, well, what then? Well, see, now it's all about once this Indiegogo project is over with, and I say, well, I'm going to make it an ebook. It's about the cover, and it's about that, that one thing that I'm going to... Um, say because again I got 10 to 15 seconds to get their attention to go oh I can't wait to open this book in order for them to buy the book um, so it's we're still at that point where I'm learning about the the marketing of a book and and the uh, the production quality because that's very important because if it's a crappy looking book it's not gonna go nowhere and um, I'm going to see about doing a couple of changes on the Indiegogo project to see what happens there. But unfortunately, we live in a time now where um, people just don't hold books and read them the way they used to. Um, I think I'm part of a rare breed of people. We authors are. We love our books. We love talking about our books. We love seeing our books. And that, I think that's what I'm going to do today. I have a poem that's in one of the books that's in my resume. Um, it's called My Books. It's a long one, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little snippet of it. And, uh, and you'll see where my passion for my books comes from. Um, I am thankful that you all are here again. I'm thankful that I'm back. Um, everything is a, a, a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. This site is a work in progress. Thanks for enjoying the blog. I'm going to go and uh, try to find it, put it up enough of it for you all to enjoy and like I always say have a great day and enjoy <laughs>